What's going on guys? Quick update before we head out. That's my new Honda Accord. I'm in the old one and I'm going to go pick up a trunk for it right now off of a sketchy Craigslist deal. Let's go. What's up guys? So I actually just left the guy's house. I didn't want to record there. So the trunk doesn't have a wing on it. So I'll have to be drilling holes for it. I'll show you in a couple minutes. Um, the trunk is totally dent free. That's awesome. I just need to paint it, drill holes and put my wing in it. And then I also managed to uh, finagle him a little bit and get one of the last interior pieces that I was missing. So that's pretty awesome. I'm heading home right now. Should be home in about an hour and a half. Uh, but for you guys, it'll be a couple seconds. Just picked up a new tie rod for the Accord, so we're gonna go install that right now, and then I'm gonna show you guys the trunk and the condition that it's in. All right guys, so we just picked up my front passenger outer tie rod. That's the one last piece I needed before I can put tires in the car, and then I can actually get it aligned. I didn't wanna not have a new tie rod. It makes a little bit of noise, but you can't hear it when you're driving. Figured I might as well fix it. It was only 26 bucks after tax. Now, you're gonna want an actual breaker bar, or for me, I just use a lug wrench with a steel pipe as leverage. You're gonna need the new tie rod itself. That's the old one, because I already changed it. Yeah. So that was the box that came in. You're gonna want the tie rod and the hardware it comes with. It should be a cotter pin and a castle nut. You're also gonna want a 17 millimeter wrench, a 19 millimeter wrench, and some anti-seize lubricant. Not to mention, you're also gonna want something to hold up the car as a secondary precaution, a jack stand to primarily jack up the car, and a wheel chalk just so the car doesn't come rolling forward. Just got back from the guy on Craigslist. As you can see, my trunk's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty beat up. So, we got this nice new trunk, new, quote unquote, needs paint, but there's no dents in it. But for now, tie rods. Breaker bar, breaker bar, breaker bar, breaker bar. Got the two things I shouldn't even take the wheels off. Got the prelude and the rope itself. So the socket is a bit too thick. Doesn't quite fit in the wheel wall. I don't want to scratch up the wheels any more than they are. So we got a lug wrench. And put it on. Break them all free. Take the wheel off. And we're good to go. One thing you're gonna wanna watch out for when you're uh, taking your wheels off is this little guy right here. Dude is chilling. We have the lug wrench from Honda themselves. We also have a breaker bar, just so we can get some leverage on it. Slide it right over. Break it free. You're also gonna wanna find the pinch weld underneath your car. Should be right here. Right here is the pinch weld to line it up with our jack. So we have something to put the car on top of so in case it falls, we're all set. We also have a wheel chalk so it doesn't roll away. Since the parking brake is not engaged, because I don't know if it works. You want to make sure it lines up nice and well. And then... Now that all these are broken free, go ahead and jack the car up. Again, making sure everything's all lined up and it's not going to slip out. You can move it around a bit to make sure. One new tire this car has, so I'm not scared of steel belts. 
But if you look at a tire like this, this one is extremely, extremely bald. And there's actually steel showing through around it. So if you have older tires, you want to be careful when you're taking them off that you don't cut yourself on it. And you also want to make sure you replace them as soon as possible. And just like that, the tire's off. Like I said, this is a very, very new tire. You can still see the colored stripes. So we're gonna put this over here for now. This is going to become my spare because I'm buying four new soon. So this will be a good spare for now. Let's just go lay it in the grass. With our tire put away next to our hood, we can go ahead and assess the damage. Now a good way for telling if a tire rod is bad, and I should have shown you it with the tire on, when you shake it side to side like this with the tire on, you can feel a little bit of play. If you feel that play, it means your tie rod's bad. And then you can further inspect it to see which one is bad. Here we have our brand new Master Pro outer tie rod for the front passenger. That's where we are. So this is about what it looks like for the 05 7 Stone Accords, which are 2003 to 2007. This is what it should look like. If it looks any different, it's probably wrong. Bad boy out of the bag. And here we are, a nice new part. Should also come with some hardware, which we have right here. All right guys, so the first step is if you can see this lock nut back here, you're gonna wanna grab a 19 millimeter wrench. Now I'm not sure if that's the same for all cars, but for the 2005, uh, 2003 to 2007 Accord, it should all be the same. It's a 19 millimeter, and you're gonna wanna grab it, and you're just gonna wanna break it free a little bit. And as you can see, we're already there. Now, you're gonna wanna grab your 17 millimeter wrench, and right under here, there's a nut. You're gonna wanna go ahead and knock that loose. And now we're gonna get some WD-40 and spray it on there so it comes off a bit easier and everything is lubricated. All right, so you're just going to apply the WD-40. Try to do it as clean as possible. And the rag is also to help not only prevent it from dripping everywhere, but you can also apply it on the back where you may not be able to reach. Yep. Yeah, that should be good. All right, now that you're finished applying your WD-40, you're going to take that bolt the rest of the way out. So, we're gonna go ahead and grab our 17 again. Now, if you didn't work like a caveman, you'd have a power tool. But since I live in a stone age, a wrench it is. And as you can tell, it's now about hand loose. So I'm just gonna do it with my hand the rest of the way since it's much faster. So, I don't know if you guys could tell how dirty my hands are. That's why you're gonna wanna wear gloves. All right, so for the next step, you're gonna wanna grab your ball peen hammer. If you don't have one, a claw head will work, but it's really not recommended. You're going to be making contact with this piece right here as the vibrations are going to pull the tie rod out. And there is a method if you don't want to reuse the tie rod, but I think we should be fine since this is a newer car. All right guys, so you're gonna to wanna to hit this a few good times, which will send vibrations through and actually knock it out. And if you're lucky, it'll come right out. All right guys, so now this next step is actually pretty important. So this is your tie rod, and now that it's out of the spindle, you're going to want to count how many times you rotate it around. So, when you go to get it lined up and you put your new part back on, it's pretty okay, and then if you go to get an alignment, it'll be spot on. 17, 18, 19, it was about 19 revolutions. Now, if you have the problem where this lock nut is actually spinning with your tie rod, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to put a wrench on this and hold it tight while you unscrew this. All right guys, this is just for your reference. If you're ever concerned whether your tie rod was actually the piece causing the noise and you couldn't tell when it was on the car, this should be a dead giveaway. This is our old, beat out, worn out tie rod. As you can see, you can feel it. It's super clunky. It moves around real easy. But when we compare it to our nice new tie rod, as you can see, absolutely no movement at all. It's a nice soft new rubber boot too, so there's no possible tears. And there's no actual movement. 
All right, guys, so the next step before you put your new tie rod on is to grab some aluminum anti-seize. Now, this is just so nothing seizes up for the near future, forever, actually, because if it seizes up and you blow through another tie rod, it is gonna be the worst day of your life. Now, this is some older stuff. We should probably buy some new stuff by now since we've had this since I lived in a whole nother town, but it works. So you're gonna grab a good amount of it, but not too much. This stuff is nasty, and this is why I wear gloves. And we're just gonna coat this right here in any seize. Now, if you guys get any extra on something you don't want it on, you can go ahead and grab a rag and just wipe it off. So now that it's on there, we're also gonna want to apply it to our new tie rod. So we're gonna put it on these threads right here. Just probably screw this down so you can get it as much as you can you may even want to put it in here all right guys so now you're gonna grab your freshly lubed up and somewhat cleaned tie rod and remember the amount of revolutions you counted well that's what you're gonna start with here so we're gonna go one now since I only broke this free I should be able to just go to there and stop but it's always good to count just so you can double check two 19 and now, as you can see, that was a little bit broken free. I had it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plop it into this hole. All right, so you're gonna wanna make sure that this is as tight as you can get it. All right, so now that we have this as tight as humanly possible, we are going to grab our cotter pin, which should have come included. And we're going to put it through the hole that's on the tie rod itself. And then you guys know how a cotter pin works. On the back, you're going to display the end. Bend it apart. Rotate it if you have to. This is just an extra safety precaution. You'll notice mine didn't have one on, but now that I do, I'll be extra safe. All right guys, so we're on to the last couple steps. You're gonna grab your 19 millimeter wrench and we're gonna tighten up this lock nut that's in the back. So, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go under the car, I'm gonna do that now. All right. Now that is all tightened up. All right guys, so now that everything is all tightened up, we have this tie rod tightened up down here into the spindle with our cotter pin twisted. We also have it tightened back up under the inner tie rod, the correct amount of revolutions. The last little step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a rag, I'm gonna wipe down anything I may have gotten any seize on that I don't want it on. And now that we've done that, what I'm gonna do as an extra precaution, anytime I take my wheels off, I like to do it. I'm gonna put a thin layer of anti-seize on the lug nuts, just so in the future, whenever I have to take them off, they won't be all seized up and gross. All right, we've gone ahead and we've put our anti-seize on. I'm just gonna wipe away a little bit of the extra that we got. All right, now it's time to go ahead, put the wheel back on, thread on the lug nuts, and we'll be all set. Now that our tire is as tight as we can get it, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna remove our, we're gonna remove what we use to hold the car as a secondary precaution, our jack stands, if you wanna use those, or if you wanna just use, like me, a uh, center block and a piece of plywood. All right guys, now just as a little check, what we can do now, as you tested before and you did this, you could feel a little bit of play. Now, there's absolutely no noise and no feeling coming from this tire. That means what we fixed was right. One of my next videos I'll be making is restoring these wheels and I'll be plasti dipping them aluminum 
so they look factory and they'll look a bit cleaner and you won't be able to see as much of the curb from the previous owners. If you guys like to see that video, go ahead and drop a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one.